Should trans fats be banned from food? It's an important question, but first, what exactly is a trans fat? Stay tuned for Health Politics. Welcome to Health Politics with Dr. Mike McGee, a weekly program exploring important trends in health. When New York City recently announced it had banned artificial trans fats at restaurants, Mayor Michael Bloomberg said, quotes, nobody wants to take away your French fries and hamburgers. I love those things too. But if you can make them with something that's less damaging to your health, we should do that, close quotes. And that's what's being done. Beginning January 1st, 2007, trans fats have been outlawed in cooking oils used in New York City restaurants. And as of July 1st, 2008, trans fats will be banned from all New York City restaurant food. The not-so-dramatic response from most city residents and other Americans far and wide was, trans what? The truth of the matter is, trans fats offer an example of how challenging it can be for people to keep up with the latest medical science, especially when it comes to nutrition. In this program, we'll examine how trans fats became our enemy, and more basically, what trans fats are. Let's start with some background facts. Most of us know by now that balanced nutrition is the way to go, that American food portions are ridiculously large, and that caloric intake must be offset in order to maintain a steady weight. A balanced diet is about taking in the recommended portions of protein, carbohydrates, and fats. The American Heart Association recommends that fats should make up 30% or less of our daily diet. The right combination of fats is critical to life. Fats are an important source of energy, they're essential for growth and development, and they help regulate blood pressure, heart rate, blood clotting, nerve transmissions, and temperature control. So why have fats, or more accurately some fats, gotten such a bad rap? The answer involves cholesterol, the waxy substance that's critical to the production of some hormones and vitamin D. It's important to limit the amount of cholesterol we eat, but cholesterol in the bloodstream is what's really important. High blood cholesterol levels increase the risk of heart disease. The biggest influence on blood cholesterol? The mix of fats in our diet. The liver makes cholesterol. Once it's on its way out of the liver into the bloodstream, cholesterol is transported by a small molecule that's part fat and part protein, the low-density lipoprotein, called LDL. When there's too much LDL cholesterol in the blood, it can be deposited on the walls of the coronary arteries. This is why LDL cholesterol is often referred to as the bad cholesterol. On its way back from the blood channels to the liver, to be dismantled, cholesterol is transported by a larger sibling, the high-density lipoprotein called HDL. HDL cholesterol makes it less likely that excess cholesterol in the blood will be deposited in the coronary arteries, which is why HDL cholesterol is often referred to as the good cholesterol. And this brings us back to fats. As I mentioned, the types of fats you eat help determine your blood cholesterol LDL and HDL levels. So what is a fat? It's mostly a chain of carbon and hydrogen atoms with a couple of oxygen atoms attached to the tail end. Carbon is the main player here. And because of the atomic structure of carbon, it's able to form four bonds to other structures. When you create a carbon straight chain, you immediately fill two of the four spots for each and every carbon. That leaves two spots open. If you fill all of those open spots with hydrogen, or saturate the structure with hydrogen, you've created a saturated fat. Dropping a couple of the hydrogen atoms and using those extra spots to doubly connect two carbon atoms together creates what we call a double bond. Because several hydrogen spaces have been evacuated, 
and unsaturated fat has been created. If the chain has only one double bond, it's called a monounsaturated fat. If the chain has two or more double bonds, it's called a polyunsaturated fat. Now, if you take an unsaturated fat with a double bond, heat it, and add hydrogen, you can change the position of the hydrogen atoms at the double bond. Usually, they're both on one side of the chain. But the chemical reaction causes one hydrogen to cross over to the other side of the chain so that the hydrogen atoms now sit across from each other. We call this a trans fat because trans means across. We first started making trans fats when concern surfaced about the health effects of saturated fats in butter. By hydrogenating the unsaturated fats in vegetable oil, that is adding hydrogen atoms across from each other to create trans fats, we discovered that liquid vegetable oil turned solid and could be sold as sticks of margarine. From the 1950s to the 1980s, we thought what we were doing was healthy. Tufts University nutrition professor Alice Lichtenstein says that back then, quotes, anything was good if it decreased saturated fat consumption, but then studies began to question trans fats too, close quotes. In fact, in 1994, the Center for Science in the Public Interest petitioned the FDA to require food labels to disclose trans fat. Took more than a decade, but as of January 1st, 2006, trans fat occupies a separate line under saturated fat on food labels. Now that we understand what fats are, what do they do? Unsaturated fats, those with one or more double bonds, are good. They lower bad LDL cholesterol and they raise HDL cholesterol. Trans fats, those liquid to solid hydrogen creations, are the evil twin. They raise LDL cholesterol and lower HDL cholesterol. Unsaturated fats, lower rates of heart attack and stroke. Trans fats, raise them. And finally, what about those saturated fats with the endless straight lines of carbon and hydrogen that we worried so much about in the past? Still bad, but not as bad as trans fats. Saturated fats raise LDL and HDL, but the net overall effect is more harmful than it is good. Join me next week. We'll discuss what foods go with each of these three types of fat, how to read the new nutrition labels, and a few simple strategies to help you match or exceed the nutritional health of New York City restaurants. For Health Politics, I'm Mike McGee. Thank you for watching Health Politics with Dr. Mike McGee. For more information on this topic, please visit our related web links, discussion guide, or downloadable transcript and slides. For videos and information on a variety of other health topics, visit our homepage at healthpolitics.org. If you would like to subscribe to our free weekly video, click on subscribe to Health Politics and enter your email address. Again, thank you for watching.